Hey guys, uh, I've always been interested in the Thane Hines Regen X um, experiments, and so I constructed a pretty large scale model of what he is. This this wheel right here is about 27 inches in diameter, and uh, it's got 60 uh, one inch by one inch cylinder magnets in a north south north south configuration, and they're N42s. And then down here, I have a coil. Uh, 21 gauge uh, bifiler wound coil um, connected the way um, Tesla connected is in his uh, in his patent and then in the back here I have uh, one horsepower uh, three phase uh, 3600 rpm uh, 23460 volt uh, motor and um, here you can see it uh, it's connected directly to um, a Tico Westinghouse FM50 uh, variable frequency drive. And then back here I have a laser tachometer and uh, that that points to this little reflective tape right here. And then this way I can get a get a speed reading here on my uh, on my little uh, netbook. And then in the back on the wall right here I have a power meter plugged in. And so the variable frequency drive is directly plugged into the power meter so that I can measure my input power directly into the motor. So, um, and then later on, I'll hook up the oscilloscope and show you guys what the uh, what the waveform looks like. Okay, so this this wheel is actually really quite heavy. I think it weighs somewhere between 30 and 50 pounds. Uh, so it takes quite a while to um, spin up to speed, and so I'll spare you the uh, spin up length and I'm just going to cut in and out of the video um, for the different results. So what I'm going to do here is uh, I'm going to uh, spin the motor up to 25 hertz, 25 hertz uh, input frequency and um, that seems to be about the cutoff point for when uh, after, after speed increases after that um, you start to see the regenerative acceleration effect. And then after that, I'll take it up to 30 hertz and then um, take some measurements and you guys can see um, what the results look like. Okay, so the disc is spinning now at uh, 25 hertz uh, input frequency. And uh, the switch is open. And my speed is about 1454 RPM and my input watts is about 179 watts. So now if I take this coil and uh, short it, you can see the input wattage really hasn't changed and um, the speed really hasn't really changed either. So uh, now I'm going to take it up to uh, an input frequency of 30 hertz and then we'll uh, do the exact same experiment. Okay, so now uh, it's spinning at 30 hertz. Uh, the switch is open, and uh, my input wattage it fluctuates around a lot, but it's about 437, 436, and my input RPM is uh, 1674. All right, so. Uh, I wrote those numbers down right here. So my PN is about uh, 437 and my uh, speed is uh, 1674, 1675. And now we're going to short it and then record our measurements. Okay, so I want you guys to watch the, the power and the RPM really closely because it happens uh, very quickly. So I'm going to short this. There you can see the power dropping off really fast and you can see the speed increasing. So this is uh, classic regenerative acceleration uh, happening uh, when the uh, coil is shorted. So we'll uh, let it level off a little bit and then we'll take our measurements here. All right, so it seems to level off at about uh, 272, uh, 272 watts on the input, and the speed is about 
about it's about 1734. Alright, so I wrote those values down and you can see um, the huge difference uh, between open and shorted on the power and uh, on the speed. So this, I mean, these are really amazing, impressive results. Seemingly, that is. All right, so um, I did the calculation, and so simply by um, shorting the coil, uh, the input power uh, to the prime mover drops by 165 watts, and uh, the disc speeds up by about 60 RPM. So um, now we're gonna do, um, a loaded test and uh, and I'll show you some really cool things about that. Alright, so I opened up the coil so we'll take a voltage and a frequency measurement so you guys can see um, what those are like and then we'll attach a load. Okay, so it's it's off scale. Um, it's in excess of one kilovolt. My meter doesn't go high enough to measure the voltage. Um, one thing that uh, you guys won't be able to see or be able to smell is that it's producing a lot of ozone on, on, on open. There's a really strong smell of ozone in the air. Now um, we'll do a frequency measurement. So as you can see, um, the frequency is really high. That coil is getting tilted um, about 840 times a second. So. All right, so now I'm gonna attach a load. I have a 200 watt uh, Rio stat right here. Um, uh, 2,250 ohms. And uh, so yeah, I'm gonna hook that up and then um, I'll show you guys the uh, what happens as I um, add and reduce load. All right, so I've attached the full load right now. Um, the resistance is pretty much on max, so it's, uh, I've got about the 2,250 ohms um, going through the load. Uh, you can see the voltage is about 180 volts, and um, the current is about 85 milliamps. So now I'm gonna um, turn down the load, and then you'll, um, you'll see the voltage drop. So I'm going to take this down to about um, 117 volts, which gives me approximately 10 watts. Okay, so we'll leave it there. Um, 115 volts and 85 milliamps um, gives me approximately 9.7 watts. So I'll just round it up to about 10 watts. So now we're going to take a look at um, speed is and our input power to the prime mover. Okay, so our input power to my prime mover is about 280 watts. Okay, so what I want to show you guys now is uh, what the voltage and the current waveform look like um, when there's load across um, the uh, coil. Right now, um, you can see the, uh, the little uh, ticker right here. Um, there's about 550 ohms worth of load um, across that coil. Um, the input power is about 274 watts, um, so which is very close to our um, shorted coil um, input power. And um, so I'll show you guys what the waveform looks like. And I'm going to stop it here. But what you can see is that the current really isn't lagging the voltage. So. When people start talking about a delayed lens or the currents lagging the voltage, and that's what's causing the uh, the acceleration, I really don't think that's what's actually going on. Uh, based on uh, what the waveform is, the current waveform uh, falls exactly directly um, underneath the voltage waveform. There is there is no detectable phase shift whatsoever. So I thought that uh, that was kind of interesting. Okay. So I've taken the uh, 21 gauge bifiler Y um, coil off the, um, the core material, it's a ferrite core material, and just for the hell of it, since I have a thermal camera, I thought I'd show you guys uh, what the temperatures are like on that. Okay, so on the core material, you can see it's quite hot at about 45 degrees uh, centigrade, and then um, the coil material, like the, the windings, those are about 40 degrees centigrade. 
So yeah, you can see that um, due to the high frequency current, it's really uh, it's uh, really heated up both the core material as well as the uh, the coil. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is uh, so we can do an apples apples comparison. Um, I'm going to stick a uh, 21 gauge uh, single filer, okay, so monofiler, just a single just a single wire, onto the um, core, and then uh, put that into the machine, and then we'll take a uh, we'll take a uh, power measurements, and then see what that uh, what that looks like. Um, a couple of other remarks. Um, right here, I have a met glass core. Um, I've tested both the met glass as well as the ferrite, and um, they both seem to perform more or less the same, um, which is sort of I didn't expect that. I thought met glass would outperform the uh, the ferrite um, a lot more, but I think they're rated for more or less approximately the same frequency. I think they can do both about twenty thousand um, hertz without. Um, running into any really serious issue. Uh, back here I have a steel core. Um, I have not tested that one on this machine. I've tested it on other uh, machines, but that one cooks, I mean, you put any kind of high frequency, um, high kind of, any kind of high frequency through that core and it's going to cook like crazy. Um, I, did a, I did a test with a buddy and he had that, and, and we had that thing up to um, 80 degrees centigrade um, when we pulled it out, so it was like literally almost ready to melt the uh, the bobbin coil right off the the core material. So, um, one thing I did want to note about the uh, the steel core is that um, as soon as you short it, um, you definitely see your input power drop as well as your um, RPM increase. Now, my belief is that that and I I tested that on several different coils, and um, my belief is that. That occurs because um, when you short the coil, it saturates the core, and so when those magnets are flying by, they're not um, they're not actually impacting the uh, the coil windings because the core is saturated. So your your power output on the coil actually drops because it's not the magnets not hitting it back, or the uh, magnets are not going through the coil. Um, so, um, so I see a lot of people doing tests with the iron core. Um, I know uh, Angus Wang has got better results with the iron core than he did with his laminated core, and so um, I think that's why that occurs. Um, uh, I have some other couple, a couple other coils here that I've um, experimented with. Um, this one here is a 24 gauge wire. Um, so I have not been able to get the acceleration effect. It's monofiler um, on this one, and then I also have a 17 gauge uh, bifiler, but I haven't um, at 30 hertz. I can't get an acceleration effect on this one either. I probably have to take it up um, much quicker, which is, which I haven't done. All right, so I'm going to put this this coil in, and then um, we'll take some power measurements and see how it compares to the uh, the bifiler. All right, so I got the uh, 21 gauge wire uh, monofiler in there now instead of the uh, bifiler. So you can see there's just uh, the two wires that are coming out. Now uh, we'll take a voltage measurement and then also a frequency as well. So here you can see the voltage is about um, 620 volts. So I'm guessing it's probably about half of the voltage of what the bifiler was. The bifiler, if you remember, was um, over a thousand volts, my uh, meter couldn't even measure it. So, and um, the frequency is roughly the same at about 865.6 hertz. Alright, so um, our 21 gauge uh, monofiler wire is um, the input to the motor is 30 hertz and um, I'll show you guys here. The switch is open and our power is about 267 uh, watts and our speed is about 1732. Um, so I'm going to record those values. Okay, so uh, now I'm going to short it and we're going to see if uh, anything interesting happens. So. So as you 
can see, um, basically nothing happened. So, shorting the 21 gauge monofiler really didn't do anything. So I'm gonna um, write these values down to 69 watts and uh, 731 RPM. Okay, so um, now let's attach a load and see what happens. All right, so I have the full load uh, connected across the uh, coil now. And so I'm gonna decrease the resistance to about, so that I get about 131 um, volts. So 131 volts and um, 77 milliamps gives me approximately 10 watts of power out. And so let's check our power in. Okay, so our power in is at about uh, 280 watts. Okay, so here are our, our final results tabulated, and um, I think the conclusions should be pretty clear um, from these experiments in that. So the 21 gauge bifiler wire, um, when it's running open, um, is consuming 437 watts, whereas the 21 gauge um, single wire um, running open is consuming 268, 268 watts. So that's a huge discrepancy in terms of what the input power is when the coil is open. Um, so when you short the 21 gauge bifiler wire, um, your speed goes up, right, and your power input goes down. Um, so it looks really, really impressive. However, if you compare it to um, a standard single wire, um, the result's not impressive at all because it's you're you're artificially um, making your power input really high, and then you're just compensating for that artificially high input when you're shorting the coil. So as you can see from this effect, there definitely is no violation of the law of conservation of energy at all. All the power that you're putting in, um, you're paying for, or all the power you're getting out of those acceleration effects that you're getting out of it, you're paying for every single bit of acceleration and um, uh, de uh, decrease in power. So the results that really show clearly that there's nothing novel here, well I mean there is something novel, I don't know why your input power is so high on that um, uh, when you have the bifiler configuration. And I think it has something to do with the high voltage. Like I said before, um, it smells really strongly like ozone, but I don't know what the electromagnetic effect is and why um, having that coil open basically creates a large vacuum effort when you short it. It, like, it kind of goes away. Um, but, I mean, when you're looking at the, the power out results, bifiler, um, if, if, if we... If we um, do an apples to apples comparison and um, get 10 watts out on both, then um, the input power is actually the same between the two coils. So you really aren't ahead at all with the um, 21 gauge bifiler over the um, 21 gauge single wire. So this, this, this supposed delayed lens or um, regenerative acceleration effect really, um, really, like, there's no point, there's no reason why you would design a um, a generator system like this because like when it's open you're paying like crazy for it um, versus uh, the single wire so I think this is I really think this shows why um, the Thane Heinz effect is really bogus um, and it's it's really important I don't even know if he knows this but uh, or if he's actually done the measurements but it's really important to uh, do an apples to apples comparison and measure what your PN is um, in, in, a, in a configuration that doesn't have the regenerative acceleration effect and one that does. I mean, so many people that I see running the experiments that aren't measuring their PN whatsoever, and they're not doing a comparison between um, two coils, one that has re the acceleration effect and one that doesn't. Um, so I think this is really important. So uh, let me know what you guys think, uh, if you have any theories on why, on why it, it consumes so much power and then why shorting it would make it consume less power and then um yeah so anyways thanks for watching